Let's take an in-depth look at moving, scaling, and rotating objects in Corel Draw. I'll get started with the very basics and I'll be working with the pick tool in this session. If you have one object, a selection of objects, or a group of objects, everything that I'm about to go through in this session will apply to that. But we'll be working with one object throughout this session just for the purpose of keeping it simple while we explain how we can work with all of the different options we have available to us when we're moving, scaling, and rotating objects in Corel Draw. And there's a lot of hotkeys I'm going to go through here that will show you some things that perhaps you weren't aware of or have never seen before. And some of these I have not been able to find documentation for. I discovered them myself through a process of trial and error. But let's get started with simply moving an object. All you need to do is left click on the object left click and hold down, move the object, release your left mouse button, and you'll have moved the object with your left mouse button or your selection or group of objects. I'll go here with holding down my right mouse button and move the object. And when I release, I'll have the option to move or copy the object here. And I'll go ahead and move here. So that's the basic way in which we move objects with our left or right mouse button. We can also constrain our movement of objects by holding down control. If I select my object, hold down control, and move, I'll be constrained to alignment of the object either horizontally or vertically. You can see my cursor is not on the object, but the object is constrained. And the same thing applies to moving it vertically by holding down the control key. We can also do nudging in Corel Draw. There's three different types of nudging. There's nudging, there's super nudging, and micro nudging. Nudging is using the arrows on your keyboard. You can click on, say, the forward arrow, and that will move the object up. I can hold down on the arrow, so let's say the right arrow, and I'll just move it to the right and keep nudging it. Now, if I do nudge holding down the shift key, I'll do a super nudge, and that's actually more distance or moving the object further than the regular nudge. And we can go in any direction with the arrow key. So we can hold them down or just tap them one or two times. After the super nudge, we have the micro nudge. And if we hold down control, we will move less distance or a smaller amount of distance than with the normal nudge. And the same thing applies. You can hold the arrows down or just tap them. So we can do moving through left click, right click, and also nudging with Corel Draw. We can move our objects around. Take a look at scaling and rotation. Objects, selections of objects or groups in Corel Draw really have two different states or modes when it comes to scaling and rotation. There's the scale and stretch mode and the rotation and skew mode. They both have center points. The center point for rotation and skew is different than that of scale and stretch because you can move this center point and we'll get into that later. They have different handles. For example, Scale in Stretch has a scale handle and a stretch handle. Rotation in Skew has a rotation handle and a skew handle. We can left click to toggle or switch between scale and stretch and rotation and skew modes. If I left click on an object, by default, I will get the scale and stretch mode. If I left click again, I will switch or toggle it over to the rotation and skew mode. And then if I left click again, I'll go back to the scale and stretch mode. Now we've got our handles here and this is your scale handle. Left click, hold down and you can scale the object. This is a stretch handle and you can left click, hold down and stretch the object. 
your scale handles are on the corners of the object or the selected objects and the stretch handles are in between those corners. If I left click I can see here I have rotation handles on the corners and then my skew handles between those. If I click on a rotation handle, left click, hold down, I will rotate the object. If I hover over a skew handle, left click, hold down, move, I will skew the object. I'll hit Control Z to go back. Now we have many different options available through hotkeys when it comes to scaling and rotating our objects. And we'll want to be aware of those because they can be very handy in our workflow and design projects in Corel Draw. For example, from the scale and stretch mode, if I select an object and hold down the shift key, I can scale the object from the center point of the object as opposed to the opposite corner of the scale handle that I selected. And you can see that now, and then if I change the shift, I'll be scaling from the center point of the object. Now, if I use the same shift key and go to the rotation and skew mode, holding down shift, I can now rotate and scale the object from the center point at the same time. If I hold down control, from the rotate and skew mode, my rotation will be constrained to 15 degrees around 360 degrees of the radius of possible rotation. The same applies for skew. Left click, hold down control, and I'll have constrained steps in my skewing from the rotate and skew mode. If I go to the scale and stretch mode and hold down control, I'll be constrained to increases based on 100% of size for my scaling, as you can see here, that just double the size of that object. I'll hit control Z to go back and the same applies to my stretching, hold down control and I'll double the size of the object based on the stretch as opposed to the scale. If I hold down shift and control from the scale and stretch mode, I will increase or double the size of the object in an increment of 100%. I'll hit control Z to go back and that also applies to the stretch handle. I'll double the size of the object. And if I continue, I'll do that again. Holding down Shift and Alt from the scale and stretch mode, using my stretch handle, from the center point, I will mirror and equally expand or stretch the size of my object either horizontally or vertically. If I go to the rotate and skew mode and hold down the alt key, I will be in a distortion mode, as you can see. And I can make some radical adjustments and changes to my object. This also works from the skew handles, as well as the rotate handles. Now you can see that this is based on the opposite corner of the object that I'm working with. But when I go to the rotation handle, it's based on the center point. That I can do this distortion with. If I hold down Alt from the scale and stretch mode and select a scale handle, left click hold down, I can transform the rectangle or object completely. And you can see here that the transformation is based on the opposite corner from the scale handle that I selected but I can completely change the shape of this rectangle. 
if I hold down Shift and Alt from the Scale and Stretch mode and select one of the scale handles, I'm now in the Transform mode going from the center point of the object. And I can radically change the object that way. If I hold down control from scale and stretch mode and take one of my stretch handles, I'll increase the size of the object based on a stretch of a 100% increment if I'm going in the direction of that stretch. However, if I go in the other direction, I'll basically duplicate the object flipped that way. And I can do the same thing here and pull up. Or if I come down, I'll duplicate or flip the object. I'll hit Control Z to go back. Moving the center point of an object from the rotation and skew mode to rotate the object around a newly positioned center point. If I click and go to the rotation and skew mode, you can see I can hover over the center point. My icon will change, left click, hold down, and I can move the center point for the object or any objects or group I have selected. I can then left click on the rotation handle and I will rotate around a new center point. I can also hold down control once again to constrain that right click one time duplicate then hit control R which is repeat and create a number of objects around that new center point as you can see with the new rotation point. So you can see there are a lot of hotkeys that we can work with and options that we have available to us when we're doing our rotating and scaling and moving objects in Corel Draw. We want to be aware of all these so we can use them in our design projects and our production artwork. And some practice with these, you'll become very accustomed to them, be able to use them, and then you'll see opportunities where you can use these techniques in your design process, in your production artwork, etc., working in Corel Draw. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next tutorial session.